Hello, welcome to the presentation about the West Georgia Amateur Radio Society's Whisper Balloon. What is it? These are also called floater balloons or pico balloons. It's literally a mylar party balloon with a very lightweight 12 gram payload that transmits using the whisper protocol on 20 meters. Here you can see an image of it closer. It uses supercapacitors to hold a charge and it uses very small solar panels to recharge. When and where will this happen? January 26th and 27th is the date for Winter Field Day this year. The West Georgia Amateur Radio Society will also have our Winter Field Day at that time, and we hope to launch this balloon on that Saturday, the 26th. Our Winter Field Day will be at McIntosh Reserve Park, and we plan to launch in some open field. The ascent rate on this balloon will be very low, so we will need lots of room to launch. Where is it going? Well, we hope it's going far, far away. Unlike a typical weather balloon launch, which ascends fairly quickly and reaches a burst altitude and then comes down fairly close to the launch site, we will never see this one again. It will travel thousands of miles. We hope it will cross the ocean, fly around to other countries. It generally follows the jet stream, so that's a good guideline to follow, but we can't be sure of the exact path and where it will go down. They often go around the world. Some of them have even gone around the world multiple times. The tracker uses a function called geofencing, and that allows it to not transmit over countries where those sorts of amateur radio transmissions are prohibited in the air. The UK is one place. There are several others. It reports its location as a four-character grid square. For example, EM73, that's my grid square. The resolution on a four-character grid square is 70 by 100 miles. As you can see in these images, on the left is a four-character grid square, specifically EM73, and on the right is my six-character grid square, EM73JN. So if we had that level of resolution within our tracker, you can see how close we could get to knowing the exact location. That being said, since we're not recovering this, it's nice to have a general idea and that'll be close enough. What you can do, you can track our balloon with WSJTX. Make sure you check the box to upload spots, that will help us out. If it gets into areas where it isn't being received as well, or even if it is, just to make sure that we know where it is on maps online, you can upload those spots. As you can see, here's a screenshot of WSJTX. And see where I have marked the checkbox to upload spots. It's very simple to configure. Choose Whisper on the mode menu and 20 meters as the band and then tune your radio to the standard whisper frequency of 14.0956. If you are unable to interface a radio and listen to it directly, you can watch the spots online. Whispernet is one place and there's the link. You can also go to my website at n4bwr.com and under the main menu, find Track the W4FWD Pico Balloon. I believe the link will also be on the WGARS.com website. And you can also watch it on APRS.FI. We have access to a script that we can run on a server, and it will port whisper data to APRS. 
Importantly, we would like you to share this with everyone. Share it on social media, on nets that you might check into, and with friends, family, and coworkers. This is going to be a long-term exposure opportunity for the club, so we're excited about that. Also, very importantly, if you are able, please contribute to the fund to pay for the tracker. WX4BK made the initial investment uh, and purchased that with his own funds. So we would like to be able to reimburse him for that, especially since we are all enjoying the uh, tracking of the flight. Once it's in flight, I will do live video streaming to update on the progress of the flight. I'm thinking probably once a day, every day for the first week, and then once a week after that. I thank you for watching this video, and we look forward to a successful flight and your involvement. Thank you.